I moved onto a boat in May 2013. Um, had four years almost of just this lovely place, lovely community, until the dreaded day really, when we were told that this person was taking back the land and we would have to go. From our experience of being evicted, what we have learned is that you may own your boat, you may buy it at mooring, and then they can ask you to leave for no apparent reason, and you have absolutely no legal comeback. I went to get a solicitor and asked her about it, and she said, you might as well just pack up now and go. You haven't got any legal rights. The court rules that your boat is your home and you're not connected to the land. So anyone can turf you aside and not make you homeless because you still have your home, but finding somewhere to park a 50-foot boat can be difficult. It's happening all across the country. Well, we've chosen a lovely day to come. And it's, I mean, I've just collected stuff here over, from my life over the years, you know. 51 years now that I've had this boat. This was an article that, um, uh, about us as a little family when my daughter was t nearly two. Uh, in 1974, this was. And here I am with obviously long hair, sitting at that table, getting a meal ready. Uh, but this was, you know, quite a long time ago. <laughs> My boat was built, I was told, there you are, that's your home. Um, as long as you follow the normal rules of being on a mooring like this, um, you can stay as long as you like. So things have changed since then. Two years ago, we kind of got bought and sold. Um, it's a bit like a village being bought and suddenly you've got a new landowner. I think the intention is to, is to develop the moorings and it seems at this stage that doesn't include us. Most of the boats were purpose-built for this mooring. There are no other moorings on the Thames that are available. So it really means you own a boat, you have nowhere to go, you can't moor it anywhere, so you will um, lose the whole uh, value of your boat and equity and you'll be homeless. I've lived on this boat all of my life. Um, I'm 21 now and I'm brought up here by my mother, who is a single mother. Um, and I've really come to experience and love this community. We pay council tax, we pay for all of our bills, and yet nobody can seem to establish the fact that this is our right, it's our right to live here, um, as we have done for all this time. The general gist of it is that they want to bring in better, nicer boats and kick people out that really do call this a home. Chelsea Yacht and Boat Company, the moorings operator, have served 15 of them with purported termination notices on the basis that there has been a breach, a technical breach, of their dry docking of their houseboats. And while the moorings operator has said the reason why he's done that is for health and safety, we see that that could be dealt with in a different way, not by terminating licences. From the perspective of the boatyard owners, they're trying to run a business, they're trying to run a business that's safe, that's secure and that has a future. For the individual boat owners, they find themselves with very little protection from the law. 
and they don't even have the protection, for example, that's, that the owners of static caravans have. So in the future, we do need to look at how we can build into the law greater protection for, for boat owners. Not just here, not just in this boatyard, but indeed around the country. My situation now is I'm completely off grid. I've got no water, uh, no ele mains electricity. I can't see many other options. I can't afford I have to buy a house. It's, yeah, to leave would just, I really don't know what we'd do. I really don't know. And, you know, you've also got to be aware that this floating wooden box is only worth anything because of where it is. And we've invested our whole lives and our livelihoods in it, paying these fees every quarter of a year, which aren't easy. Um, so if someone to come take that away would sort of cripple us financially and certainly emotionally for me as well.